Topic 9 is titled Conic Sections. In this topic, we'll look at the graphs and equations for circles, ellipses, and hyperbolas. The definition of a conic section is a figure formed by the intersection of a two-dimensional plane and a right circular cone. Now notice on the right, parabolas are also an option of a conic section. Since we've spent quite a bit of time on the equations and shapes of parabolas, we're not going to work with them in this topic. We'll focus on the general form of a second degree equation over at the right. AX squared plus BY squared plus CX plus DY plus E equals zero. Notice it's kind of like a parabola but with more terms involved. Essentially, if A and B are equal to each other, meaning same sign, same number, your equation identifies a circle. If A and B are not the same, and it stays addition, they're an ellipse. If A and B are opposite signs, whether they're the same number or not, we will get a hyperbola. Each lesson in Topic 9 focuses specifically on one of those types of conic sections. Let's start with circles. A circle is the set of all points that's equidistant from a fixed point. When looking specifically at the equation for the standard form of a circle, we have two scenarios. One if your center is at 0, 0 on a coordinate system, and one if the center is translated to h, k. Notice if the center is 0, 0, x squared and y squared are isolated on that left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we introduce a new variable, r, r squared, where r stands for the radius. If your center is translated or moved somewhere else in your coordinate system to h, k, notice now we have x minus h squared and y minus k squared. Both signs will change for the actual center, so we're changing both of their directions. And then on the right-hand side, we keep r squared where r would stay our radius. Let's put this to the test. To graph, the first thing you'll want to do is identify your center. Then we'll determine with the value of the radius to plot four boundary points in all directions from the center. Last but not least, we draw a smooth curve through those four points. Example one on the right. Graph each circle by finding its center and radius. The left-hand side will always tell you about the center. The right-hand side will always give you what you need to know about the radius. If it's just x squared plus y squared on the left-hand side, we know our center will default to 0, 0. So let's go ahead and plot that point right at the center of our graph. Now the radius squared always defines that right-hand side. To get the radius by itself, we'd have to square root each side. Technically, then, the length of the radius would be positive or negative square root 15. Actually, in all directions, but for us, we're just going to plot four directions. We'll count to the right, to the left, up, and down. Now the square root of 15 isn't a perfect square, so we'll have to approximate it. Right below, if you plug that into your calculator, the square root of 15 is really close to 4, so we'll approximate it at about 3.9. From our center, I'm going to count over 3.9 to the right, which is pretty close to 4, to the left, whoops, not quite as close, let's move that over. And this, we're just going to try to draw these as accurately as we can, up 3.9, and down 3.9. So we have those four kind of boundary points. Go ahead and draw a smooth curve through those points to create a circle. Hopefully your graph looks something like this when you're done. We're not looking for perfection, we're just trying to draw our best, or draw the circles the best we can. Over on the right, let's try another one. We have x plus 3 squared plus y minus 2 squared is equal to 9. In this case, we have a translated center. To figure out that translation, we go in the opposite direction for both x and y this time. That will translate our center to negative 3, positive 2. Let's go ahead and plot that point. Negative 3, positive 2. The length of the radius squared is found by the, square, or the value on that right-hand side. If we take the square root here, we would get r equals plus or minus the square root of 9. This is a perfect square, so that's helpful for us for graphing. That's exactly the square root of 9, which is 3. So it'll be plus or minus 3 in all directions. 
Go ahead and plot those four points to the right, left, above and below the center, and sketch your circle. When you're done, your graph should look similar to the one that's shown. When asked to write an equation using given information, you'll want to determine your center as h and k, and decide which template to use for your standard form. Make sure on the right-hand side, if you know your r value, you square it in your equation. Over on the right, it says write an equation in standard form of each circle using the given information. In example A, it tells you the center and the length of the radius. Since the center is translated, we know we're going to use that h and k rule. The template is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. If we plug in what we know, h is 0, we would have x minus 0 squared. And we'll simplify that. Since k is positive 6 in the equation, it stays minus 6. The radius is the square root of 5, but we're supposed to square that value. We can simplify that as well. If we have x minus 0, that's the same as just x squared. y minus 6 will keep in that parenthesis. The square root of 5 squared, the square root cancels with the squared, leaving us with just 5. That's all you do to write the equation of a circle with given information. Over on the right, we have a picture, so we have to deduce some information from it. The center, it looks like it went 5 to the left and up 4. So in this picture, it looks like our center is negative 5, 4. The radius, if I count from the center to the edge, looks like it's 2. So we'll approximate it as so. Plugging this into our standard form, we would have x plus 5 squared, since we're going in the opposite direction, plus y minus 4 squared is equal to 2 squared. Simplifying that right-hand side, keep the left as is, x minus 5 squared plus y minus 4 squared is equal to 4. Writing equations of circles when, they're transla or when the center is translated. Due to time constraints, we're going to omit this application question and move right down to, you guessed it, completing the square. Not every equation of a circle will be in the form that's easy to recognize. You may have that second degree standard form that we have to convert. When we convert, we complete the square. To do so, you're going to want to group your x terms together and your y terms together on one side and move that constant, which was defined by e, over to the other. Not only do you get to complete the square once, but you get to complete the square twice. When you're done completing the square, make sure to write your answer in standard form of a circle. All right, let's see if we can put that to the test with our equation on the right-hand side. How can you rewrite the equation of x squared plus y squared plus 4x minus 8y plus 4 equals 0 to show that it's the equation of a circle and to identify its center and radius? By definition, we know this is going to be a circle because the coefficient in front of x squared and y squared is the same. So a equals b. That's how we know it's a circle, but we want to put it in standard form for the equation of a circle. The first thing we're going to do is group our x's together. x squared plus 4x plus, and then I'm going to group my y's together y squared minus 8y, wow, 8y, there we go. And it says move e to the other side, so I'm just going to subtract 4 and set this equal to negative 4. Next, it says complete the square for x and y. Here we go. The rules for completing the square. Once you have your x squared and x term, we take half of our b value, which is the number in front of our plain x half of 4 is 2, and then remember we square that number, and that brings us right back to 4. We add that to the inside, x squared plus 4x plus 4. Now if we add 4 to the left, here's what we have to remember. We also add 4 to the right. 
and then we factor. What are two numbers, oops, I want to keep that in purple, hang on, oh, maybe, okay, now we're back. What are two numbers that multiply to get positive 4 but also add to positive 4? That would be 2 and 2, that answer we always have in that second step. x plus 2 times x plus 2, and then we write that as a perfect square. Starting to look like the equation for a circle. We get to do the same thing with y squared minus 8y. Now we'll take half of our b term, which is negative 8. Half of negative 8 is negative 4. Be careful though, when you square negative 4, we don't get 8 again, we get positive 16. Adding that to the inside gives us y squared minus 8y plus 16. And remembering that if we add that to the left-hand side, we also have to add that to the right-hand side. All right, going from there. Factor, what are two numbers that multiply to get 16 but add to get negative 8? That would be negative 4 and negative 4. Here we have y minus 4 and y minus 4, giving us y minus 4 squared. Now it's addition in between them, and then on the right, negative 4 plus 4 plus 16 equals 16. So we have x plus 2 squared plus y minus 4 squared equals 16. This looks like the equation in the standard form for a circle. It says identify its center and radius. To find the center, remember we look on that left-hand side with the squares. If we have x plus 2, the center would be negative 2. y minus 4 would translate the center up 4. And that's all we do. For the radius, remember the radius squared is equal to that right-hand side. We'll take the square root. Now r can be plus or minus 4, but the radius is just 4. We just go 4 in all directions. So here is our center and our radius. We're not going to solve systems either, so that is your lesson for circles in 9.2.